Welcome back to Bay Sunday. The Omega Boys Club has been keeping youth alive and free for years. It's hard to believe that this amazing organization is turning 30 this year and here to share three decades of fighting violence and empowering the youth in our cities is executive director and founder Dr. Joseph Marshall and he brought along a recent college graduate Evangela Brewster. Welcome to Bay Sunday. Thank you for having us. Hard to believe 30 years. You started this 30 years ago in 1987. How did it all start? Um, my co-founder and I, and I was a longtime employee of the uh, school district and uh, figured if the kids could survive me in the classroom, everything would be okay. But, uh, you know, I, I started losing kids to the streets, uh, literally going to the funerals of my former students. So um, I had to, they were, I like to say they were getting A's in math, but F's in life. And mm. I wanted to find a way to keep them alive and free. And so I started this after school organization 30 years ago and said, if you stick with this, I opened my big mouth and said that uh, uh, you can pick the college and I'll find the money. And mm -hmm. really, that's that. Yeah. That was my commitment to them. And not years an easy later, thing to do, though. Why not have any money? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know, we really believe that if you do good things, good things will come to you. And 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 it's been great. Thirty years later, it's been great. So, and we, if it's hard for you to believe, it's really hard for me to believe. It's been thirty years. How have you been able to do that, though, to keep the kids focused on what? Impo what's important and what matters. It's not easy because the lure of the, you know, temptations of the street life are out there. Um, you get them to focus on education, to get them to focus on, on, uh, on uh, doing the right thing. It's, it's, it's a challenge, but um, young people surprise you. They, mm -hmm. they always say they wanted it, they just needed somebody to help them yeah. do that. And, and, and uh, you know, they help each other and, and uh, you know, it's, it's been great. It's, I'm just sort of in shock right now. And we have Evangela here. You went through the program 10 years ago, roughly 10, 11 years ago. Yes. What was it like for you and how did it help you? Uh, it was amazing. I think that for me as coming from somebody who's in Bayview, who knows what it's like to live when you're hearing gunshots and things like mm -hmm. that, it was something very, very refreshing for me. So I took very much interest in it once I, got, once I heard about it. Mm -hmm. And when you were in the program, what did they help you with? practical things. Yes, yeah, so math, literacy, getting your reading, writing together, and also telling you about the risk factors and the things that you need to look out for when it comes to living everyday life. Mm -hmm. And talk about some of the relationships that you forged while you were there. It's also, it must be an inspiration to see people like Dr. Marshall, who, who's there day in, day out, trying to help kids. Absolutely. Dr. Marshall is definitely one of my father figures. and. A great mentor, also Mrs. Stale. She is definitely the woman to talk to. Anything you have a problem with, she will help you understand and see something different, a different choice, and basically you'll you'll get a better understanding of what you need to do. And it seems like it's contagious. You know, when when a student goes through a program like this, it just spreads like wildfire. Where she tells her other friends about it in that same community. You know, people ask them, "Where? Well, how do the kids find out about the program?" By far, the biggest. A source of referral are the young people themselves. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, we put her sister through the program, yeah. Mallory, and then Game Evangela, and they go out and tell their friends. And so we don't really have to recruit. Uh, you know, the kids get them, bring other young people there. And I, we like to say we're not a program, we're a family. Mm -hmm. And I, I said that, you know, we've gotten in, we got into this because families were in disarray, so we'd be able to provide them with the family that uh, a lot of them didn't have. And do you rely a lot of volunteers to kind of teach those? those things like math, science, English, after school? We have a staff, uh, a small but strong staff. You know, uh, uh, if you think of a family, a couple of parents can go a long way. Sure, yeah. <laughs> and, and big brothers and big sisters. Yeah. And so, yeah, we, we, uh, we have Tuesday nights are our night. And like I say, the light has always been on for 30 years. Mm -hmm. And, 30 years. and uh, we're looking for 30 more. And, uh, you know, 218 college graduates later and 60 mm -hmm. graduate schools and a radio show. It's been on the air, Street Soldiers, for 25 years. So. It's been amazing, and that's why we're going to celebrate all year. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. There's a lot to be proud of. And Dr. Marshall, I'm sure you're proud of Evangela. Tell me some other stories of, of kids who have come out through the program and, and been, become very successful. Oh, I think of Mike Gibson, who I met in the Youth Authority for three counts of armed robbery and attempted murder on a police officer who came to the program and graduated from Morehouse and who is now running his own EMT program. Uh, mm -hmm. A uh, couple of our young people actually met in the program and got married. And I wasn't planning on this part, <laughs> but they both have uh, e e doctorates in education and they run their own uh, their own consulting firm. Um, a young man I met, Marcus Boynton, actually on a radio show, mm -hmm. who was in, uh, involved in doing something he shouldn't have done. His mother dragged him in by the year. He now has a big position 
at, at Apple. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's just been a couple of kids that have written books. I mean, um, you know, it, it's I have Diane Thomas who came from Skyline High School, uh, who is now a, just became a, a doctor. Um, it's it's a lot of them. Yeah. Um, and, years, and, and the main thing is that they are alive and free and educated and. Uh, my other, you know, a lot of people know I'm also on the police commission. This has led me into doing something about the policing community relations. And I guess the best thing about that is these, the police don't have to worry about these young people. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. No, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you have much to be proud of in Evangel. Thank you for joining us here thank today you as well. Me. Thanks for having us. Alive and Free will be celebrating its 30th anniversary all year long, starting with an informal party at club headquarters on Tennessee and 3rd Street on February 28th. Mark your calendars. Then at the West Bay Conference Center on August 6th. And finally, there will be a huge bash at the Bentley Reserve on November 9th. For more information, you'd log on to stayaliveandfree.org if you would like to help out. Coming up, virtual reality to go when Bay Sunday returns after this break.